we're going to try and create a light that turns on and off when a door is open or closed. So probably the easiest way to detect whether a door is open or closed is to attach a magnet to the door and then to sense when the magnetic field gets stronger as a magnet approaches the sensor. And the puck has a magnetometer built into it. So this code here, which, um, which you can find in the reference, is, um, is just a really simple way to get notified once a second or so when you get a magnetic field reading from the magnetometer. You can change the speed that it runs at, but and this is kind of a really good balance of being useful versus having um, a lot of power consumption. And this won't take a significant amount away from your puck's battery life. So we can see some numbers here. If I bring a magnet near to it, we'll see those numbers will change quite a lot. But it's very difficult to come up with anything useful because of this. What we want is a zero reading. Um, and we can do that by just um, asking it for a single reading right at the start when we upload the code. Um, and we have to assume then that when the code's uploaded, there is no, um, there is no magnet around it. And now we just subtract this reading from each of the x, y, and z of the, um, of the magnetometer reading. So we'll just do this three times. Oops. So if we upload this code, we'll see that we end up with much more sensible values. And if I move the magnet closer, we'll see that they raise. And actually, if I move the magnet around, we'll see that the x and y especially change quite drastically. So that's quite useful, but we probably don't want to have to care very much about, um, about the direction of the magnet. We just want the strength of the field. So for that, we'll just use some trigonometry. Um, we'll make a variable called s, and we will use the square root of everything multiplied um, with itself and added together. Now this is basically Pythagoras, um, but in three dimensions, you've just added a z. And let's output that. So if we do this now, we'll get a simple number. And as I move this closer, we'll see that that number hopefully will raise up over time. So given the distance, it looks like having a value of a thousand as a cutoff point is actually quite a useful, useful thing. So let's um, let's say that the door is open when the magnetic field is weak, is maybe less than a thousand because the magnet's gone away. And we'll want to only do something when it changes from being open to being closed. So um, let's make something called is open. And we'll just say if those two are different, then we'll update is open and do something. In this case, let's just flash a light on and off. Um, so we'll make that, um, if it's open, we'll make it the red LED, otherwise we'll make it the green LED, and we'll flash it for a second, a thousand milliseconds. So if we upload this code, we'll see that initially it's changed state, so it flashes red, but then when it thinks the magnet's getting close and the field is strong enough, it will light the green LED. So now we can kind of build on this. Um, we probably don't care about the, the strength anymore. Um, but while the sensor itself flashing is useful, ideally it would be able to do something on another sensor. So we could use this with um, some of the other examples on the PuckJS website to, um, to maybe control the Bluetooth light. But supposing we want to control just another puck and use that as, a, um, as an indicator for now. So we can look on the puck website. Um, here's an example of sending code to another puck. So if we take that, um, at the moment this uses whichever puck's in range. Um, you can use something called NRF Connect, but we're just going to use the one for pucks in range at the moment. And we'll just modify that so that we have a function here that um, that will uh, send an arbitrary command. 
So now let's change that and we'll say send. And in the same way, we'll say if it's open, we send the command to flash the, um, flash the red LED. Otherwise, we send the command which flashes the green LED. And let's upload it. So hopefully after it's done this, the red LED will flash immediately and it will try and contact the other puck. And in this case, it's, it's managed. It's not guaranteed that it will be able to do it, but let's move that over there. And as we get the magnet closer, well, green LED will flash and hopefully it will be able to contact the other one. And again, it will try and, and contact it. So now we've done that, um, that's our remote indicator. But we could maybe do a little better. Maybe you've got an air conditioning unit that you want to turn off when you open the door to go out. You want to send an infrared signal. Just so that I can show this more easily, I've got an infrared light bulb here. So if I put this back near and um, then I want to send some infrared signals to that. Now there's an example here in the Puck website about sending signals to infrared light bulbs. And if we take the example code here for the um, for turning it on and turning it off, we can basically take those codes and we can put them in. So if I say, if it's open, we want to send the command puck.ir with all that data. And we want to send a new line after it. Uh, and then we want to do basically the same thing, but we'll, um, we'll send another one to turn it off. So let's look here and let's grab the command for off. Um, and this page has examples on how to work out what these sequence of digits should be if your light is different from mine. So, okay, we can pull that back. So if we now upload this code, Hopefully we'll see, initially it'll think that the door's open because the magnetic field's not there. So after it's flashed its light, it should be able to turn on the other light eventually. Give it a little bit of time. And there you go. So now if I bring the magnet close to this one, it's flashing green to show that it thinks the door's closed. And it'll try and send a message to the other one to say that it should turn off. Um, you know, and these could now be, now I've taken the magnet away, it'll try and turn it on again but these pucks could be quite some distance apart. And, you know, it's not just um, a light, it's literally anything that will accept infrared remote control signals. So obviously air conditioning, televisions, you could turn on and off, um, all kinds of things. If you enjoyed this, please uh, subscribe because I'm gonna be putting an awful lot more videos on showing PuckJS doing fun things in all kinds of ways. Thanks for watching.